I'm Alessandro Jodlowski. I'm a researcher in, uh, in media and films. I come from Italy. I did my PhD on, uh, on Hollywood. I did my research on the economy of the film industry. And now, over the past three, four years, I've been working on a comparative research which compared the economy of filmmaking in Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Ivory Coast. And uh, I'm based at the moment in the university in Belgium, but I go back and forth to Nigeria as well. I go often to Lagos and uh, to follow what's going on. <laughs> so, so can you tell us your first contact with Nollywood? What was your first contact? When? Uh, well, I, very, the very first Nollywood film I watched was in London, because I, I started it for a period of one year in London. So I, there is where I watched the first film, was it Tunde Kelani's film Thunderbolt, I think. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, by seeing that film and hearing a bit about the history of Nollywood, I got interested in it. At that time I was just doing a master. So I thought I would be interested in discovering more about Nollywood. And particularly I was interested in, in the history of this industry, understanding how uh, it became so successful, how it managed to develop. And, uh, you know, uh, built up such a big industry out of nothing at the beginning, right? So I decided to engage into a more long-term research. I got the funding for a PhD, and so starting from then, you know, I, I got to meet a lot of people and watch a lot of films, and, and I'm still around. <laughs> okay, going back to your university, I mean, talking about your research, when you, this, when you introduced Nollywood, to your um, professors, uh, could you please tell us their reactions here? Yeah. There was a lot of interest. I did my PhD in Italy, and at that time, the old Nollywood thing in Italy was very little known. Or I mean, people within the university didn't know much about it. And uh, I mean, there have been a couple of film festivals which have presented retrospective on Nollywood, but it wasn't something people knew much about. So within my department, which was the Department of African Studies, uh, people were very excited about hearing more about it because it's, it was a completely new phenomenon for them. So we were very encouraging. At the same time, my supervisor wasn't someone who had any specific knowledge about it, or he couldn't really uh, support me in that sense. I mean, it was very useful, but. And so I got also involved in the project of Jonathan Ames, who is a scholar working on Nollywood since basically the early days of the industry. And that was also very helpful because uh, we did debate with him and my own supervisor, I got to develop my research. Okay, do you, um, do you have Nollywood events in your university now? Or do you plan to have more? Uh, uh, do you plan to have anyone? We did a, a series of things in Italy. Now, now I'm based in Belgium. So okay. in the past we did, like, uh, in Italy we organized uh, a couple of uh, film conferences uh, connected to Nollywood. Not only on Nollywood, but also on Nollywood mm -hmm. in Naples. Then I collaborated with the film festival in Italy for a few times. So we did some things there. And in Belgium we did one big conference a couple of years ago on the effect of the uh, digital uh, transformation and transition in African uh, cinema. So that was, and, and of course, much of the conference was also. We hope to do something else uh, next year, but it's nothing is really planned. And now I collaborate a bit also with an uh, initiative uh, in Bordeaux, okay. in uh, Western France. Okay. Uh, we're trying to organize a little event connected to Nollywood. We're also talking with the people of Nollywood Week to try to, uh, to do something there. Now you said you went to Nigeria. Um, could you please tell us um, what you did in Nigeria? I, uh, I guess it's, it, it was part of your research. Exactly, yes. Yeah. I went uh, several times now, but I spent the longest period during my PhD research. I did around one year there in two different slots. Mostly, I stayed mostly in Lagos, and uh, my main activity was to hang around with filmmakers, producers. Uh, I went a lot on sets, I tried to understand how the industry works, talk with people, but also observing how people watch film, what do they do, uh, when they shoot the film, and all, all of that. Yeah. Of course, I watched a lot of films, so I, it was interesting to also watch the film with the people there to understand what they, uh, how they react to the films. And now, more recently, I went again, I went this winter for two months, and I go again now in June. Uh, because the industry uh, changes and transforms extremely rapidly, so it's very important to try to go back regularly to figure out how things are moving. Because uh, also generations are changing. Now there is an upcoming 
group of uh, younger filmmakers who had a completely different idea about how we make films, and so it's it's much depends also on who you speak to, <laughs> because everybody has a different idea. If you talk to the old generation, they will tell you something. The new generation is telling you something else. That, so you went to Nigeria to see how people make films. Uh, can you give us one or two anecdotes, you know, what you observed in making films in Nigeria? What, what does it look like? Well, it's, again, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to say one thing in the sense that every people, everyone works in slightly different ways. So one good thing for me of going there was also to understand that Nollywood and the Nigerian film industry is much more complex and diversified than what it seems to be from outside and what often the news uh, and reportage on the industry makes it look like it, because generally there is this discourse about you know quick filmmaking and uh, other and stuff like this. Especially in the early Nollywood, the international image of Nollywood was one of, you know sharp, sharp. Uh, uh, but now my feeling is just that it's extremely diversified. So it depends very much on what set you are. You have some sets which are. Uh, for because of budget constraint, that okay. it's extremely quick. Like you, get, you have maybe one week shooting schedule, extremely well organized. I would say in the sense that in order to maximize time and money, people uh, act almost on an industrial basis. It's extremely quick. I was on a, um, the set of a film uh, produced by Mimi Zong, okay. uh, and she's a very smart, very precise producer, and the work was incredibly effective. In a week, they did actually two films on the same set. Okay. It was insane. And then uh, you have other uh, other films which have much bigger budget that can take uh, one, two, three months of shooting or much more as 76, the film by Izzo Joko took seven years to do it. And, uh, and in that case, of course, it's a completely different type of uh, situation, mm -hmm. a much bigger machine that is in motion. And, and, and uh, so, again, it's a very diversified industry and that is that one thing that is, is sure is that, uh, and there you see the strength of Nigerian filmmakers, yeah. they have to go against a lot of odds because just very simply talking about infrastructure, the issue of electricity and uh, yeah. the issue of traffic, the issue of security times makes mm. it very complicated to organize the shooting. And so this, it's very important for me doing research on it to look at these aspects to understand also, I think they have an impact uh, on the production. The challenges, the challenges this yeah. year. Which I think also at the same time the producers are, and the directors are very good at uh, transforming into uh, virtues rather than, you know, they, they make good things out of uh, odd <laughs> situations. So it's very interesting to see how it's reactive people are to, to react to unpredictable things that yeah. might happen on the, on the shooting <laughs> day, you know. Now let's talk about Nollywood Week 2017. You are here today. So why are you here today? It's a long time I wanted to come. I heard of the Nollywood Week since uh, the beginning, and then I met Serge, uh, the organizer of the Nollywood Week, a couple of times before. And, but for one reason or the other, it always fell in a period in which I couldn't come. Mm -hmm. And this year I, I was available, so I said, let me just go and see how it goes. And, and it's a good opportunity to see new films that have been released in the year and the best of Nollywood coming up. So it was great. And there were a few films that I missed even when I was in Nigeria this winter because they okay. had already been released in cinemas. Okay. So it's been great. I really enjoyed, I mean, all of the films, but if I have to give a <laughs> One for now is uh, Giddy Blues, Giddy Blues. Okay. I really loved it. Yeah, I watched yesterday okay. by Femi Odubel. Okay, okay. Who, uh, I also met him when I was in Nigeria. Okay, okay. Um, I really like the film, particularly I like the, the way he, it presents Lagos uh, in a different light. It really explores the city, shows all the contradictions, mm. but also the beauty yeah. of the city. So. The city. So finally, we're going to finish with, um, that's the last question, as a PhD holder in Nollywood, uh, are you going to create a faculty or, in, uh, or, or trying to influence or advise your professors or your friends to create a faculty of Nollywood in your university or teach Nollywood? Well, I, I, I definitely teach, I, I, I use Nollywood as a case studies that I... Okay. 
present to my students often. And on the other side, I'm not sure that uh, to create a faculty on it would be the best thing also for knowledge. Okay. I think okay. it would be like isolating it while... Or putting it in social sciences. Yeah, I think it should stay within the uh, film studies and media studies okay. As, as okay. topic. That mm -hmm. African about. studies. Yes. And, okay. uh, and I think it's good that it stays into larger uh, faculty in the sense that in this way the studies on knowledge interacts with larger film studies and larger media studies topics and, and problematics and concepts which helps also developing our own understanding of knowledge by interacting with other experiences. You know. um, at the same time it's true that Nollywood studies, it is by now a, a discipline by itself in a way there is so much being written, so much being uh, produced uh, around Nollywood that is great because it's a big debate so uh, you get to also to follow what's going on in Nigeria without being there because there is so much being produced and this is great. What is the reaction of your students when you talk about Nollywood? A lot of interest definitely. Still, I mean I noticed over the years that uh, people now are less um, unprepared. They, they, in most cases people have heard of Nollywood already because it has been much in the news and so generally people have at least an idea of the fact that it exists but generally they have no real idea of what it is and the history particularly. One thing that I noticed, which actually is a risk in a way, is that with the emergence of new Nollywood, many of the people who are getting into uh, studying Nollywood now believe that Nollywood has always been something like new Nollywood. So there is a kind of misunderstanding at times of the history, where it comes from, and also the existence of previous um, instances of cinema before Nollywood in Nigeria. So, that is always a challenge to make students and, and people who are curious in Nollywood understand that this is not just what they see now, that it comes from a long itinerary and it changed and transformed, and it will change and transform very rapidly in the coming years. So, uh, that, that's it. Now, talking about the new Nollywood, how can we define the new Nollywood compared to the old one? Well, for me, the, the main difference are for sure there is an issue of. Um, budget. Uh, generally films are made with a larger budget, if it's, even if it's not. Uh, you also have a, a number of new Nollywood films which go to the theatre which are not that big budget. But anyway, but probably the main difference is the um, distribution strategy. Before it was all straight to video, straight to VCD and stuff like this. Now it's all straight to cinema as much as possible. People try to put it into cinemas or eventually TV and internet. But the video as a as a physical uh, support has almost disappeared. I mean, you do have people doing still films in video in Azaba and stuff like this, or in the local language industries, but uh, the Lagos people tend not to really use or, or try to limit that distribution as much as possible because they can control it well and they lose money if they lose that. And, uh, and the other thing I noticed is that, uh, in this, especially during the transition from old to new knowledge, the role of the diaspora is transport. Uh, the distributors in Nigeria are keen into trying to grab that market because they see that it's more formalized, they can make money out of it. So that is one. And also the diaspora has got much more interest in knowledge. So you have many, for instance, uh, young and, and definitely more from the elite uh, people who are coming back to Nigeria getting involved in the industry. So overall, I think it's an industry that you know which is more elitist. In terms of the people who make films, the people who distribute them, and even the people who watch them. Because as a matter of fact, New Nollywood stays in the cinema or internet on TV, and these are all supports which are mostly accessible to the higher classes, eventually the elite in Nigeria. The lower classes still need eventually the VCD because otherwise they have trouble because they don't have the electricity or this and that, or maybe they don't have you know, their own TV or internet connection. So, and definitely they cannot afford the ticket of a big multiplex uh, theatre role. So it's really changing in the sense that it's changing also socially in terms of its constituency and the constituency it addresses. 